Oh, didn't hear it. It'll be Ferdinand. He's late. I'll go. Hello, Michael. Hello, Ferdinand. Come in, come in. We were beginning to get worried. We were afraid perhaps you weren't able to make it tonight. I'm sorry I'm late. Hello, Vera. Hello, dear. How are you? <laughs> Long time no see. Uh, well, we were afraid you weren't going to be able to make it. Oh, we've been longing to see you. It's been a long time. Yes, hasn't it? <laughs> we've missed you, you know. Now, what will you have? How do you say about some bourbon, huh? Well, why not? <laughs> Michael brought back a special bourbon from the States, you see. Oh. Oh, here. A small offering. <laughs> oh, for me? Oh, they lovely. Oh, beautiful flowers, darling. Mm -hmm. But I've got uh. beautiful roses. Oh, Ferdinand, it's very kind of you. Then you never forget, do you? Oh, they do smell nice. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I'm glad you like them. Ice? Well... Soda? Uh, okay. On the rocks, then. Oh, whatever you say. <laughs> oh, where am I? What's happened to your flat? It's all changed. Well, of course, dear. It's all Michael's work, you know. Michael's worked ever so hard on it. Well, you know what he's like once he gets started on something. He won't give up until it's exactly the way he planned it. As a matter of fact, I didn't finish the whole thing until the day before yesterday. Nobody's seen it yet. So this is an occasion, old boy. We're having a little private view in here tonight. Where did you find all this stuff? It wasn't easy, you know. Well, I did have an in here and there, a few antique dealers, some art collectors, that sort of thing. But of course, I had to make some new contacts as well. The thing is, one must never give up. Not even when one doesn't find straight away precisely what one's looking for. Fabulous the way he's done it up, isn't it? Mm. Mind you, I didn't really think it was going to turn out quite so well. The point is, if you want to give your place a real face, it's no good just being fond of antiques. You've got to know where to find them and to have that special sense of knowing exactly how to present them in your house. To know how to mix them with modern furniture, for example, and so on. Well, as it's turned out, Michael's done all right, hasn't he? It's fabulous, isn't it? Not a slipper. Well, welcome to our new home. Mm. We've missed you, Ferdinand, you know. I kept wondering, I mean, when I was working on this place, what's he going to say when it's all done up and he walks in, mm. looks around and <laughs> sees all these things? Well, cheers. 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 Of course, if Vera hadn't supported me, I'm sure it would never have turned out as well as this. Yeah. Besides, it wasn't just a question of support and understanding. She actually helped, you know. Mm. For example, that Turkish shutter gun. Well, what do you say about it? That's very, very nice. How does it fit in with the rest? Oh, very, very well. There you are, you see. You know, the Vera actually found that all by herself. Mm. She even hung it over there. <laughs> and all the time she had no idea I was looking for something just like that. Well, what do you say? Amazing, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, good gracious. What are we standing about for? Mm. Why don't we all sit down? Ferdinand. What's that? Fabulous, isn't it? <laughs> it looks like a confessional. It is a confessional. It is a confessional, good Lord. <laughs> Where did you find it? It was a real stroke of luck, you know. Well, I happened to hear there was an old disused church to be scrapped, so naturally I took off at once and drove straight down there. There you see the result. Managed to get it from the sacristan for only 300. Is that all? Mm, not bad, eh? It's genuine Baroque. But, but, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> what do you mean, what are we going to do with it? Don't you like it? Yes, yes, it's, it's, it's all right. But it's a marvellous object, isn't it? We love it, don't we, darling? Well, of course. I mean, it's fabulous workmanship. Michael got a real bargain there, don't you think? What do you think of the dining room? That's, that's cosy. Just plain, simple country style. You know what gives me the greatest pleasure of all? Uh, no, no, what? Oh. 
That gothic Madonna. Trouble was, I had to find one that would fit exactly into that niche. And as luck would have it, of course, I kept on finding Madonnas that were either too tall or too short. You couldn't have adjusted the niche. And that was precisely what I didn't want to do. I think only in this way, the whole ensemble has the right dimensions. Hmm? Well, that's the way he is. Instead of adjusting the knees, she run his feet off, running about. Well, what about you then? When are you two going to have a go at it? At, at, at what? Your flat, of course. Oh, I don't know. About time you did something with it, old boy. You don't want to go on living in that messy halfway house of yours forever. Well, I really don't seem to notice it anymore. If you don't feel up to it, well, why doesn't Eva have a go? After all, she's got plenty of time. Well, yes, I think it'd actually do her good doing something like this. Put her back on her feet again. We'll do our best to help her if she doesn't know how to go about it. Oh, Michael's a bit of an expert now, you know. He'd be happy to advise her. Tell her where to go, how to begin, what things to look for. Good gracious. I'll be glad to let her know what's available and where. Who the dealers are, she ought to see. Mm, Ferdinand's right. It's a good idea. Why don't you just hand it over to Eva? No, Eva's not very good at this sort of thing. Yes, we know that, dear. But perhaps you could raise a little interest in her. You've got to do something about that flat of yours, don't you? You see, Michael and I believe that a man's life is determined by his immediate surroundings. If you have <laughs> what we call a place with a face, Sooner or later, whether you like it or not, your whole life takes on a definite face sort of new dimension, new rhythm, new content, new order. Am I right, darling? She's right, old boy. You see, same way a man should care about what he eats. He ought to mind what he happens to eat it with and what he eats it off, what he wipes himself with, what he puts on, what he washes himself in, what he sleeps in and so on. Point is, once you start one thing, you soon find you must start another. And that will lead you to something else again. And so a sort of concatenation of things begins to form. And when you go on this way, it simply means you're just somehow raising your life onto a higher cultural level. You're acquiring a deeper inner harmony. And all this is bound in the end to affect your relationship with others. Am I right, darling? Oh, he's right, Ferdinand. If you two began to care more about the way you live, I'm sure you'd get on much better. But we get on all right. Oh, come off it, dear. Really, we do. Oh, well, I realise you'd rather not talk about it, but Michael and I have been discussing you two a lot lately. We've been thinking about you a great deal, and frankly, we're a bit worried about the way you live. It's kindly meant, old boy. It's in your own interest. Oh, remember, you're our best friend. We're both very fond of you, and we do hope that somehow or other it... All gets sorted out for you at last. But what's there to be sorted out? Oh, never mind. Shall I light the fire? Oh, not on my account. How about some music then? Oh, yes, Michael brought back a lot of new records from the States, you see. Oh. As a matter of fact, we were just playing the latest pop hit when you rang. Would you like to hear it? Oh, a bit later, perhaps. <laughs> what's that? It's our new clock. Genuine Biedermeyer. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> well, tell us about yourself. How are things with you? Oh, much the same. Is it true you're now working in a brewery? Yes. How oh, awful. Oh, darling, would you mind... Uh... Oh, sorry. Yes, of course. Here we are. <laughs> oh, what is it? Vera Speciality. Grumbo's Gratiné. Ah, Grumbo's? Well, I've, I've, I've never heard of them. Oh, we've come to like them very much lately. Michael brought back a big box of them from the States. Shells and all. Mind you, Vera really knows how to make them. Well, the whole point is you must wait for the precise moment they begin to puff up, and then you take them out of the oven just before they go down. Uh-huh. Well, uh, so how do you eat them? Ah, well, um, just take a shell and 
scoop it up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, what do you say? Very good, aren't they? <laughs> it reminds me a bit of blackberries. Yes, could be because I put a few drops of wood peak on it, just to give it that little extra something. A, 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 a what? Wood peak. I hit on it all by myself. Did you? Well, I mean, would it ever occur to you to put wood peak on groom balls? No. <laughs> oh, there you are, you <laughs> see. Mind you, it's a pleasure to cook for Michael. He's always ready to praise and appreciate even the most humble idea I might happen to come up with. And if I should concoct something really good, it gives him so much pleasure. Mm. If he were just to eat up anything that was on his plate without noticing what he was eating, I really don't think I'd bother. Yes, yes. Well, I, I see what you mean. And, of course, there are other aspects to it as well. When you know there's an interesting dinner, a new gastronomic surprise, so to speak, waiting for you at home, then, of course, you're looking forward to going back. You're far less likely to hang about the bars with your pals. Ah, uh, perhaps you might think it's a minor matter, but I happen to believe that even these little things actually make up the cement that keeps a family together and helps to create the good feeling that you've got a real base right at home. Don't you agree? Yes, yes, certainly. Well, how is Eva? She learned to cook a little now? <laughs> She's always done the cooking. All right, dear, but how? <laughs> well, I can't say that I don't like it. You got used to it, that's all. I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> I mean, for instance, that roast we had at your house before Christmas. It was before Christmas, wasn't it? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, but it really was terrible. I mean, do you remember, darling? Oh, good heavens, yes. <laughs> well, Eva was a little nervous that evening. I'm sorry, no. That sort of thing should just never happen to a cook. What does she feed you, actually? Well, we have cold dinners, mostly. What, Saturdays, too? Oh, no, no, no. Saturdays we have something special, a, l a little hot. State, perhaps. Uh, listen, old boy, I know it's none of my business, but suppose you send Eva to one of those classes. I mean, after <laughs> all, she's got plenty of time. Eva? Oh, come on, darling, you must be joking. Can you visualize Eva in any sort of class? Well, no, now you mention it. Only if she'd learn to cook, she'd straight away be more self assured. But will she listen to reason? No. She's always somewhere, up in the clouds. Goodness knows. But I don't see anything wrong with her cooking. I, I like her cooking. Oh, uh, come on, old boy. Really, I do. Well, I realize you'd rather not talk about it, but you see, Vera and I have been discussing you two a lot lately. We've been thinking about you a great deal, and frankly, we're a bit worried about the way you live. It's in your own interest, dear. It's kindly meant. Remember, you're our best friend. We're both very fond of you. We do hope somehow or other it all gets sorted out for you at last. But what's there to be sorted out? Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Shall I light the fire? Not on my account. Please. What about some music? Michael brought back a lot of new records from the States, you see. A bit later, perhaps. Genuine Biedermeyer. Lovely, isn't it? What do you actually do in there? that brewery I handle the casks <laughs> what's that supposed to mean well I roll the barrels you know good God that's pretty rough on you isn't it it's not too bad uh -huh. darling shouldn't we take Ferdinand to look in on little Pete in a moment dear he might still wake up now how is Pete oh. he's incredible <laughs> I was away in the States for only two weeks you know and when I came back, believe it or not, I could hardly recognize him. That's the sort of leap forward he made in that short time. So curious about everything. Very bright. 
and so sensitive. Excellent memory. Such a pretty little boy. Just as an example, imagine the sort of thing he asked me this morning. Oh, I don't think I've told you yet, darling. Well, all of a sudden he comes up to me and he asks, Daddy, can a frog drown? Oh. Well, what do you think of that? Fantastic, isn't it? Did you really say that? Can a frog drown? Just think, he comes up to me and he asks, Daddy, can a frog drown? Well, it's fabulous. <laughs> Such an idea would simply never cross one's mind. Frog drown. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Listen, old boy. I often say to myself, this is the only thing in life that makes sense, having a child and being able to bring it up. It's an amazing confrontation with the mystery of life, sort of school in which you learn to respect life. Those who don't have this experience can never understand what it means. Oh, he's right, Ferdinand, really. No, it really is a very strange, very beautiful experience. One fine day, a tiny creature arrives here, and you know that he's yours. If it wasn't for you, he wouldn't be here at all. You made him. He's here now. He lives his own life. Then he starts to grow up right in front of your eyes. He begins to walk and to prattle. To think, to ask questions. Oh, no, Ferdinand, you must admit it really is a miracle. Yes, yes, it is. You see, having a child changes a man a lot. All of a sudden, one begins to see things in a new and different light. One gets a deeper insight into life, into nature and, and people. Whether you like it or not, your life suddenly begins to take on a kind of new dimension. New rhythm, new content, new order. Isn't it so, darling? Oh, absolutely. Think of the responsibility you must assume all at once. It's up to you what kind of a man he's going to be. What he's going to think and feel and experience. I mean, I, I wouldn't have believed it. But now I do see how a child can give one an entirely new perspective, an entirely new scale of values. And one begins to understand that the most important thing is what one is going to do for that child. What sort of home, what sort of start in life one's going to give him. And in the light of this enormous responsibility, most of the things one used to consider of ever knows how well shaking importance turn out to be nothing but trifles. Did he really ask that? Can a frog drown? I mean, there you are. You see what a little head is able to come up with. Well, uh... What about you two, then? What about it? Why don't you have a child? Well, I don't know. Eva doesn't want to have one, I suppose. No, no, Eva does. Well, I don't understand that girl at all. I mean, what is it that she's afraid of? All the work that comes with it? Oh, no, I'm sorry. If she wanted to have a child, good heavens, she could have had one long ago. You're only doing harm to yourselves when you don't try and do something about it. I mean, especially for you and Eva, a child would be the best solution. It would help you to see things more wisely, more realistically, more reasonably. And I'm sure it would put your relationship back on its feet by providing your lives with a common purpose. It would do Eva the world of good. You'd see how she'd change. It would wake up the woman in her again. Teach her how to take care of the house. Keep it clean. And tidy. Take better care of you. And of herself. Honestly, Ferdinand, please believe us. You ought to have a child. I can't imagine how much we want you to have one. Really, oh boy, we do, you know. I believe you. Mind you, I have known women who've been quite unaffected by having a child. In which case, I'm sorry for the children. Mind you, one can't expect a child to be a sort of cure-all for all one's ills, to solve all one's problems, as that sort of approach wouldn't be right either. After all, there must exist some basic, prerequisites. Oh, absolutely. I mean, take Michael, for example. He really is the ideal father. Do you know, he works so hard at the office that sometimes I feel really sorry for him. <laughs> all because he wants to bring home some money. And then after all that work, he spends most of his free time with his family and doing up his house. Look at the way he's done at this flat, for instance. He will come home from the office, and instead of taking a little rest, he's at it straight away, beavering away again. And all because he wants the boy to grow up in nice surroundings from the very beginning. Learning to love and appreciate nice things. And then on top of that, he even has time for our little boy. Well, of course, Vera is simply marvellous. Just try and think what it means to do all the shopping, look after the little boy, cook, 
do all the washing, all the cleaning, and on top of that, for weeks, having to cope with the whole place in the shambles. And yet, in spite of it, she manages to look the way she does. Now that's something, you know. I must say, I admire her more and more every day. No, no. All this just boils down to the fact that our marriage works. Oh, it surely does. We understand each other perfectly. I don't recall there's been any serious quarrel lately. Well, we're interested in one another. And at the same time, we don't restrict one another. We don't shackle one another. We are far too kind and attentive towards one another to do anything like that. Same time, we try not to bother one another too much with our attentions. <laughs> <laughs> and we've always got something to talk about because we happen to share the same sense of humour. Same ideas about happiness. Same interests. Same taste. Same views on family life. And what's really important, we understand each other perfectly in bed. Absolutely. That's extremely important. Mind you, Michael is marvellous. He's wild, gentle, healthily egotistic, overwhelmingly sensitive, and self-sacrificing. He's spontaneously passionate and subtly refined. <laughs> Which is all Vera's doing in the first place, of course, because she manages to go on attracting and exciting me. <laughs> You'd be surprised, Ferdinand, how often we do it. And the reason it is this way, it's because we always come to it as if it was the first time. So that every time for us, it's somehow different, new, unique, unforgettable. And every time we get so absorbed in it that well, it can never become a matter of habit or dull routine. The point is, to be a good wife doesn't mean to be a simply being a good housewife or a good mother. She feels correctly that it's above all a matter of being a good mistress. That's why she's taking such good care of herself, so that in spite of all the hard work she's got to do, she manages to keep looking really sexy. In fact, she's most ravishing just when she's working the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember, darling? Hmm? Day before yesterday, <laughs> I was on my knees scrubbing the floor, and you came home unexpectedly. Beautiful, wasn't it? <laughs> Why do you think Michael's not interested in other girls? It's because he knows he's got a real woman at home who knows how to give and to take. <laughs> not some sloppy plain Jane with a mop and a pail. The point is, Vera has remained as smashing as ever. In fact, I'd almost say after she'd had Pete, she's sort of ripened. The body she's got now, it's a knockout. So young and fresh. Well, uh, Ferdinand, you can judge for yourself. Exquisite, isn't it? It's first class. You know what I like to do? <laughs> I haven't a, a clue now. Where? I kiss her ear <laughs> and her neck in turn. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> I like it too, as a matter of fact. This is how I do it. <laughs> oh, darling, no. Please. <laughs> darling, wait. <laughs> you can't you wait. <laughs> oh, darling, please. <laughs> um, when we've finished our little chat, we're going to show you some more. So you'll see what refined things we do to one another. Won't my being here make you nervous? Oh, come on, <laughs> dear, don't be silly. You're our best friend. We'll be only too happy to demonstrate the things that can be done. Shall I cover my bosom now, dear? Yes, for the moment. Well, how do you manage? How are things with you? What do you mean? Do you sleep together at all? Oh, yes, yes, now and then. Mm, not very often, I bet. It depends. Well, how is it? How it should be. It seems normal. I bet you do it sort of haphazardly, carelessly, so it's still over and done with. We do it the best way we know how. I don't understand that girl at all. She doesn't seem to be trying, not even in this respect. 
Listen, can't you make her a bit more committed to it? We're really not that concerned about it. Well, there you are, you see. That's precisely where you're making your most serious mistake. I mean, good heavens, it's so important. And you just ignore it. That's why things are the way they are between you two. And all the time, all that's needed is so very little. Who knows, it might even put your relationship back on its feet again. After all, it would be good for Eva. You'd see how she'd change. Bring out the woman in her again. Teach her how to take better care of the house. And of you. Of herself. And you'd see the difference it'd make to you. You'd suddenly give up all interest in hanging about the bars with those pals of yours. Chasing after the barmaids. Boozing. Don't chase after any barmaids. Oh, come off it, Really, dear. I don't. I know you'd rather not talk about it, but Michael and I have been discussing you two a lot lately. We've been thinking about you a great deal, and frankly, we're a bit worried about the way you live. Uh, it's kindly meant, old boy. It's in your own interest. I mean, remember, you're our best friend, and we're both very fond of you. We do hope that sooner or later it all sorts itself out in the end. But what is there to be sorted out? Never mind. Shall I light the fire? Not on my account. Well, how about some music then? Oh, Michael brought back a lot of new records from the States, you see. A bit later, perhaps. Genuine Wiedemeyer. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm. Well, whatever you say, it's an amazing object. What? The Madonna. You notice the dramatic tension between her and the yacht gun? Hmm. I bet you've never used any wood peak. Not really. Michael could bring you some back next time he goes to the States, if you like. Could he? Sure, no trouble at all. How about another Grumble? Not for me, thank you. Why didn't you bring Eva along, actually? She wasn't feeling very well. Oh, I know it's none of my business, but you ought to take her out now and again to see people. At least you'd have an excuse to dress up from time to time, put on some makeup, wash her hair. She does wash her hair. Oh, come on. Really? She does I wash her hair. I realize you'd rather not talk about it, but it's kindly meant. We're both very fond of you. Remember, you're our best friend. I know. Didn't you get my card from the States? Oh, it was from you, was it? You, you mean you didn't know? I'm sorry, I should have guessed. What was it he asked? Can a frog drown? That's what he asked, just think. Fabulous. It's fabulous. Help yourself. No more for me, thank you. Guess what we've started doing again. What? Going to the sauna. Have you? We go once a week. Be surprised how good we feel. Does wonders for the nervous system, you know. How about coming along with us, eh? Uh, I don't really think I'm the Oh, side. go on. Why don't you? I don't really think I can find the time. Sorry, old boy, but you're making a big mistake. It'll give you a bit of a lift. You'll be better off mentally and physically. Do a world of good to your nervous system. It'll be far better for you, and it'll take far less of your time than all this hanging about the bars with those questionable pals of yours. Who's that? Whom do you mean? Well, all those has-beens, you know. Those failures. Landowski, for instance. I don't think they're has-beens. Or failures. Oh, come off it, dear. Really, I don't. I realize you'd rather not talk about it, but it's kindly meant. We're very fond of you. You're our best friend. I know. Uh, listen, Ferdinand. Do you do any writing at all these days? Not much. That's what we thought. Well, I had to take this job, you see. So I don't have much time now. Yeah, and it's hard to concentrate. I realize, but as far as I can recall, you really didn't do all that much writing even before you took this job. Not much, no. No. Listen, Ferdinand. When you took this job, 
Wasn't there somewhere in the back of your mind? I mean, didn't you think that perhaps it might be a good excuse not to go on with your writing? Heavens, no. Uh, well, why then do you actually write so little? Uh, is it because you just can't any longer? Or is it some sort of momentary crisis? It's hard to say. Present times, I suppose. Things that go on. One has a, a feeling of futility. Oh, I'm sorry, old boy, but it's my impression that present times are just an excuse for you, much as that job at the brewery, and that the real reason is deep down inside yourself. You seem to have simply fallen apart, given up, opted out. It's too much trouble for you now to strive for anything, to struggle, to grapple with your difficulties. He's right, Ferdinand. It's about time you try to pull yourself together. Straighten out your problems with Eva. Start a family. Give a, a, a face to your place. And stop wasting your time. Stop boozing. Start going to the sauna. In short, begin to lead a sort of decent, healthy, reasonable life. But I don't think I'm doing anything unreasonable. Oh, come on, old Really, boy. I don't. I realize you'd rather not talk about it, but it is kindly meant. We're both very fond of you. You're our best friend. We do hope that somehow or other it all gets sorted out for you at last. Um... Shall I light the fire? Not on my account. How about some music? Michael brought back a lot of new records from the States, you see. A bit later, perhaps. Listen, Ferdinand. But you're gonna level with us, okay? Listen. Are you being quite serious about that brewery? What do you mean? Look, here, I, I hope you don't mind, but we simply can't see the point. Good heavens. I mean, to waste your life in this way, to bury yourself in that stinking brewery and damage your health doing that sort of work. Gestures like that are absolutely pointless. What are you trying to prove? Do you think anybody's impressed? Nobody gives a damn about that sort of thing anymore. I'm sorry, but the situation I was in... It was the only job I could find. Oh, come on, old boy. Don't try and tell me you couldn't have found something a bit better. I mean, provided you really wanted to and tried a bit harder. It's my impression, with a bit, a bit more effort and a little less romanticism, you could have been long since working on the editorial staff of some newspaper or some publishing house. You're basically an intelligent and hard-working fellow. Also, you've talent. That much was proved by your former writing. Why then are you so afraid to face the challenges of life? Life is hard, and the world is divided. Our country's been written off by everybody. Nobody's going to help us. <laughs> Our lot is pretty bad now, and it's going to get worse. And you can't change it, you know. It's no use trying to break down a stone wall with your head, or exposing your chest to the bayonet. What I can't understand is how the devil you came to get mixed up with all these extremists. Extremists? What extremists? Well, ex-comrade cohort and all that lot. I mean, what in heaven's name do you have in common with them? You're being very foolish, dear. Why don't you just forget about them and go your own way? We don't mean to suggest it's so easy to break out from this vicious circle. Mind you. It's your only chance and no one's going to do it for you. In this respect, every one of us is quite alone. Still, I'm sure you're strong enough to bear that solitude. Look at us. You could be as happy as we are. No reason. You couldn't have a place with a face, same as us. Nice things. Pleasant family life. Neat and elegant wife. Bright child. A more appropriate job. Earn some money. You might even take a trip to the States in time. Eat decent meals. Dress better. Go to the sauna. Invite a few friends home now and then. Show them your flat. Your child. Play them a few records. Make them some groombles. In short, the two of you may finally be able to live like human beings. Ferdinand, what the hell are you doing? I'm, I'm sorry. Now, wait a minute. What's all this about? Good heavens, Ferdinand. What's the matter with you? Are you going somewhere? I must go. But where? Home. Home? What do you mean, home? What for? I, I'm sorry. I really must go. But listen, you can't do that. I don't understand you. Look, this was supposed to be a, an occasion, a private view. We were going to show you around the flat. Show you all the nice things we've got. We thought you finished the bottle. Eat up the grumbles. Look in our little Pete. 
Michael was going to tell you all about the States. Vera was going to light the fire. Michael was hoping to play you some of his records. We were thinking you might stay the night. Oh, see us make love. Good God. You couldn't be so utterly ungrateful. Well, surely we don't deserve this. After all, we've done for you. Now, why the hell do you think Vera spent the entire afternoon baking those damn groombles, eh? For whom? Why do you think Michael dragged that bottle of bourbon all the way across the States, eh? For whom? Who the hell do you think we wanted to play all those bloody records for? Why do you think I wasted all that hard currency and carted all that flipping stuff across the flaming ocean? Now, what do you think I got all dressed up for and washed my hair and put on perfume and makeup? And why the hell do you think we went to all the trouble of refurbishing this bloody place, eh? Who the hell do you think we've done all these things for? Ourselves? Forgive me. But I really must go. No! Now, no, no, listen to me. You can't leave us here like this. Good God, you can't do that to us. You can't desert us. There are so many things we're going to tell you. Look, what will we do here on our own? What will we do? Oh, Ferdinand, please, for God's sake, can't you understand? Don't go. Don't go. Please stay. Stay here with us. Please. I'm sorry. I must go. Well, cheerio and... And thanks for the groombles. You were an egoist. You were a disgusting, unfeeling, inhuman egoist. Ungrateful, stupid, bloody traitor. You're traitor. Monster. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you here. Take your roses. Take your bloody roses and get out of here. Look, Ferdinand. <laughs> Look at the gun. Really? You should be ashamed of yourself. Vera, I'm... Look, I'm... I'm... I'm, I'm picking the roses up. Look, I've... I've got them. I'm, I'm, I'm putting them back in the vase. Vera, they're back. I'm back. I'm sorry. Gracious, what are we standing about for? Why don't we all sit down? How about some more bourbon, oh boy? Why not? What about some music? Michael brought back some new records from the States, didn't he? That's right, I did. Why don't we play Ferdinand and the record we were listening to when he rang? Good idea. You love it, dear. It's fabulous. Come in. Good morning. Ah, Mr. Baniak. Come on in. Sit down. Thank you. Have a lager. Oh, no, thank you. Come on. Lovely lager. <laughs> Don't want this lovely lager to go to waste, eh? <laughs> Pure gold. 
Oh, dig it. Thank you. Well, how's it going? All right, thank you. It better be, eh? <laughs> What's it for you today, then, uh, handling casks? Uh, just empties. Handling empties is better than handling fulls, eh? <laughs> Who's uh, handling fulls today, then? A Shikazi. Who? Oh, clocked in, did he? Uh, a while ago. Drunk? A bit. <laughs> Go on, why don't you drink? Oh, I Wake am. Up. <laughs> I'm not a big beer drinker. Get off. Really? We'll see about that, don't you worry. You'll get used to it in this place. We're all beer drinkers around here. Sort of. Local tradition, you know. I know. Come on, cheer up. I'm all right. Well... How's everything? How do you mean? I mean, on the whole. All right, thank you. How'd you like it here, then? I like it. Could be worse, eh? Uh. <laughs> How about the lads, then? You get on all right with them, do you? Oh, quite all right, thank you. Let me give you a bit of advice. You don't get too matey with anybody around here. I trust nobody in this place. People are real bastards, you know, real bastards. You can take that from me. Just mind your job. You better stay away from the other blokes. No good mucking around, eh? Especially in your position. I know what you mean. Mm. What sort of stuff did you write? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, plays. Plays? <laughs> you mean they were put on in some theatre? Yes. Well, fancy that. Please, eh? Listen. You were to write something about this brewery. About uh, Buresh, for example. Do you know him? Yes. Right, character, eh? Huh? Come on, cheer up! That's, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> anyway, I bet it never even crossed your mind, right? What never crossed my mind? Well, one day you'd be bumping casts in a brewery. Some paradox, eh? <laughs> I'll say that. Well, first time we've had a writer in here. And mind you, we've had all sorts of odd customers in here. <laughs> well, you take that Buresh, for example. Know what he was? Grave digger. <laughs> that's where he learned to knock it back, you know. And that's why he landed in here. The stories he can tell. <laughs> Marvellous. I know. Come on, cheer up. I'm all right. What were your plays about, then? About white-collar workers, mostly. What? Get off. Really? See that? Had your morning break yet? Not yet. You can take it later. Just tell them at the gate you were here with Ed Malston. Thank you. Oh, get off. What do you want to go on thanking me for? Anyway... I respect you, you know. Me? What for? Well, it must be pretty rough on you, not being accustomed, see. After all, just sitting around the house all your life, nice and warm, sleeping till all hours in the morning, and bingo! Now this. <coughs> no, really, <coughs> I mean that. I, uh, I respect that. Eh? Excuse me, I, I won't be a minute. <coughs> <laughs> I, I bet you got to know all sorts of actresses when you used to write plays at that theatre, eh? Oh, well, naturally, yes. Like, uh, Oak Darla, for example. Yes. You know her? 
in person? Yes. Well, suppose we ask her down here for a pint or two, eh? Hey, we could take Boresh along with us. Hey, might be a lot of fun. What'd you say? Hey. Come on, cheer up. I I'm all right. <laughs> Hey, that youngster in the fermenting room, you know what I mean? Mlinagic. You want to watch it when he's around. How about uh, this pop singer, uh, Carol Gott? Happen to be acquainted with him, too? Yes, I know him. Yeah. Pity you went here about five years ago. Fabulous mob in here, then. You won't find anything like that round here today. Booze up used to have in here in those days. Oh. We'd uh, get together over in the Maltings. Myself. Another bloke, uh, Kaya Bajanik. Not here anymore. Onza Peterka. The girls over from the bottling. Not well, many time to go on until the small hours. And mind you. We got all the work done, regardless. You ask Gonzo Paterka, he'll tell you all about it. He told me about it already. Oh. How much did you make, then? On those plays of yours, you know. Well, it, it varied. Round about five grand, eh? No, it, it, see, it depends how often they're performed and by how many theatres. There are times one gets plenty of money and there are times when one gets nothing at all. Like nothing in a whole month, eh? Oh, it could be several months. So there's a catch in your game too, eh? Just the same as everything else. <coughs> anyway, some paradox, eh? <laughs> eh? I'll say that. Hey, why aren't you drinking? Come on, drink up. Oh, yes, I am. I'm not much of a beer drinker. How about the other half? Mm. <coughs> No more. Get off. Listen. I'm going to tell you something just between you and me. If there'd been anybody else here in my place, you can lay odds. You wouldn't be working with us now. Was there trouble? You bet. I'm very grateful to you. Yeah. Mind you, I don't know, sort of, you know, well, the way I see it is, if I can do a, a chap a good turn, I say to myself, well, why not, hey? Hey? That's the sort of man I am. Even today! Well, the way I see it, people got to help each other out, right? This time I help you, next time you help me, right? Yes. Had your morning break yet? Not yet. You can take it later. Just tell them at the gate you were here with the head molster. Thank you. Don't oh, get off. What do you want to go on thanking me for? Mind you, nobody wants to get his fingers burnt nowadays. I know. Main thing is, we've all got to stick together, as the saying goes. I, I don't know what you think, but what I always say is a good team is the basis of everything. Yes, I agree. Hmm. Oh, why aren't you drinking? I expect you'd prefer some of your fancy wine, eh? Hey. Hmm. You'll get used to beer in this place. We're all beer drinkers around here sort of local tradition, you know. I know. You married? Yes. Any children? None. Anyway, I respect you, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no need to. I the... mean it. Must be pretty rough on you, not being accustomed, see. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Won't be a minute. Better. <clears throat> uh, how old is she then? Who? Hmm. Bochtalo, who else? Oh, um, about 43, I think. Get off. She sure doesn't look it. No. Listen, I mean it. Things are going to be all right. 
just got to help each other out, that's all. Just got to stick together, as the saying goes. Well, the point is, as I always say, a good team is the basis of everything, right? Pity you weren't here about five years ago. Fabulous mob in here, then. You won't find anything like that round here today. Today, I trust nobody in this place. Tell me, who's this chap, uh, Code? What do you mean? Well, they say a chap called Code came here to see you. He's one of my colleagues. Another writer? Yes. <laughs> what about it? Never mind. Listen. Listen, I don't want you to go around thinking I've got no troubles of my own, Vaniak. Well, I... But after all, you are the head maltster in this brewery. In this hole, you mean? Why do you think I'm stuck in this hole? Hey? Eh? Yeah, you wouldn't be interested. Oh, but, but I am interested. Do you know a job I was offered? Do you know what I'm supposed to be? Hey. Know what? The head morse in the part of Bitsa Brewery. Really? That's right. Look at me now. <laughs> Some paradox, eh? Or well, why didn't you take the job over there? Forget it. You married? Yes. Any children? No. Listen. It's none of my business. But you better tell your pal Holub not to come here again. Code. What did I say? Holub. Look, it's none of my business. I wouldn't know that bloke from another. I've no idea what sort of chap he is. I'm only telling you this in your own best interest, that's I'm all. I'm sorry, but... Look, it... mate, you sip it like it was brandy. Well, I told you, I'm not much of a beer drinker. Get yeah, nah. off. Really, I'm not. I know. <laughs> and a drink with me. I'm not good enough for you, eh? No, that's not what I meant. I realize I'm no pop star. I'm not like a Carol Gott. I'm just a common brewery mug, that's all. But you're a professional in your line of work, the same way that Gott is in his. Why didn't you take the job in Pardubice? Forget it. Listen, things are going to be all right, don't you worry. I'm going to look after you. You're a mild, hard-working sort of chap. Clock in regular every day, no griping about everything like all the elders, no grumbling about your wage packet, hey? And bearing in mind the shortage of labor, well. Yes, I'm very grateful to you. Besides, you're a decent chap. I can tell I've got a nose for that sort of thing. I can smell a villain a mile away. You take that Mlinagic from the fermenting room, you know what I mean? Yes. I sized him up the minute he walked in. You want to watch him? Why didn't you take the job in part of Bitsay? Forget it. Thing is, my neck. You can trust me. I'm not going to let you down. Thank you. All I want, what I want is to know that I can trust you. That you're not going to pull a fast one on me. That I can rely on you. That's all. I, I think you'll be very pleased with my work. There's no need for me to tell you this, you know. As a matter of fact, I aren't supposed to tell you. Anybody else in my place? Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. But what was it you weren't supposed to tell me? Well, about this chap. Holub. Cohoot. Listen. Listen. 
I haven't the faintest what sort of bloke he is. It's none of my business. But I, I couldn't care less about it. Me can cop it for all I care. All I'm concerned about is you. Now, the way things are, you, you're not too badly off in here. You just handle a few empties, nobody bothers you, eh? Yes. Hey, yes. Well, your pal Cole isn't going to give you a job. Damn it, if I can't keep you on in here, is he? Where is he? Well, hardly. Well, there you are, then. Come on, mate. Grow up. I'm sorry. Huh? But, well, please forgive me. What? Look, surely, I can... You can what? I'm sorry. Please forgive me, but I mean, surely, I can see anybody I like. Well, that's exactly what I said. Didn't I say that? Go on, see anybody you like. That's your inviolable right, damn it. Nobody can muck about with that. You don't let anybody take that away from you, for Christ's sake. That's basic, damn it. You're a, you're a man, not a toe rag. Well... That's it then, isn't it? I'm sure your friend Cohort will know that from now on you're going to see anybody you like. I, I'm sorry. What? <clears throat> I, I really must go now. Where do you want to go? Well, they'll be looking for me in the cellar. Oh, stop them. They've got you crazy. I think, look, just see where you are and drink. Listen. Listen. You wouldn't care to know why I didn't think that job was part of Beatsy, would you? Of course I would. Mean it. Of course I mean it. W why didn't you take the job in part of it, say? You know they did to me. Of what? They accused me of going partners with the publican. And said that we nicked 5,000 crates of strong beer that were lying around here surplus. Makes you puke, eh? Mind you, it wasn't anything like that. Just to let you know the sort of people we've got around here. Like that creep, that menage from the fermenting room, you know what I mean? Yes, I know. People are real bastards, you know, real bastards. You can take that from me. Just mind your job. And better stay away from the other blokes. No good mocking about it. Especially in your position. I know what you mean. Has your morning break yet? Not yet. You can take it later. Just tell them at the gate you were here with the head maltster. Thank you. Go get off. What do you want to go and thank him for? Um, excuse me. Mm. All right, we'll move it. When do you want to bring her, then? Whom? Well, who else? Well, I'll see what I can arrange next time we happen to meet. What about asking for Saturday, Hey. But this Saturday? Hmm. I've no idea whether she'll be free. Get off. She'll make herself free for you, eh? But the actresses are very busy people, you see. They're committed. They can't make any changes just like that. Sure. No, we're not good enough for in here. Forget it, don't you? No need to bother yourself. No, that's not what I meant. 
Uh, I'm not going to twist your arm. All I was thinking, I thought we might have a bit of fun, that's all. Come on, cheer up. I'm all right. Listen, Ferdinand. Yes. <sighs> Your name is Ferdinand, isn't it? Yes. Listen, Ferdinand. You don't mind me calling you that, do you? No. What would you say about being the stock checker in the full store? Not bad, eh? After all, what you what you call an intellectual. Also, you're honest. You don't want to go around humping cast with the gypsies. Huh? What'd you say? Well, You'd have a little office all to yourself. You'd keep warm in there. Lock up during the lunch hour. You know, make out you're doing a bit of clearing up. And you could carry on thinking up some gags for those places of yours in peace and quiet. No, what are you saying? Well, if, if you think there's a chance. There's always a chance. Well, I, I, I mean, I know I'm in no position to pick and choose, but if there, if there was a chance, I'd, I'd be delighted. You see, I, I'm fairly tidy, I think, and I can type. Uh, I know a few languages. I can't deny it is pretty cold down in that cellar. Particularly when one isn't accustomed. Exactly. You don't know anything about uh, bookkeeping. I can soon learn. Shall we drink to it? Yes. <clears throat> Go on, bottoms up. <clears throat> Come on, cheer up. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm all right. Listen, Ferdinand. Yes. We're mates, eh? Yes. You're not saying that just to please me, are you? No. You trust me, then? But of course I trust you. Now, wait a minute. Now, let's be honest, eh? You trust me. I trust you. Well, then, look here, mate. I'm going to tell you something, but this is strictly between you and me, right? Right. Sure? Sure. Well, then, look here, mate. They keep coming in here asking questions about you. Who? Me. Who else? Really? That's right. Is it your opinion that my job here in the brewery is in jeopardy? Are they leaning on you to give me the sack? Do they hold it against you that you hired me in the first place? Do they? Look here, mate. I'm going to tell you something. But this is strictly between you and me, right? Right. Sure? Sure. Well, then, look here, mate. If there'd been somebody else here in my place, you can lay odds you wouldn't be working with us now. Get the drift. Excuse me. Uh, I won't be a minute. Did you have it off with her? Hey. With whom? 
Oh, no, who else? No, I didn't. Get off. I didn't. Well, then as far as I'm concerned, you are a washout. I'm sorry. No. I must, I must go now. Where'd you want to go? Well, they'll be looking for me in the cellar. Oh, stuff. Um, they've got your keys, haven't they? Look, look, just stay where you are and, and drink. Listen, Ferdinand. Yes? Your, your name is Ferdinand, isn't it? Yes. Listen, Ferdinand. You don't mind me calling you that, do you? No. Well, look here, mate. I happen to know one of the blokes that keep coming in here and asking questions about you. We used to go to school together, isn't it? Old friends, see? Donda Mashek. He's a decent sort of bloke. At least, he takes my side. Good for you. Not that he's got that much influence, but he's, he's helped me out a couple of times already with this and that. Uh, and, uh... There's no knowing when we may need his assistance again. Besides, I say he's a decent sword. And, well, so you see, the, uh, the long and the short of it is that uh, I just couldn't turn him down. See what I mean? What are you looking at me like that for? I'm not looking. Well, go on, say what you're thinking. Oh, come on, out with it. I'm not thinking anything. Get off. I don't know what you're thinking. Oh, it never crossed your mind that if I don't go along with them, they're going to find somebody else. And that's bound to be much worse for you because you can lay odds they're not going to find a fair bloke like me. I happen to be straight, see? Not like all the others. That's the sort of man I am, even today. And that's where you were damn lucky. Because people are real bastards, you know, real bastards. You... You realize the risk I'm taking, being fair to you in this way? Suppose you pull a fast one on me. What then? Suppose you go on grass, hey? I'm putting myself at your mercy, as a matter of fact. I won't tell anybody. If you write about it, then you'll shove it into one of your plays, and they'll have me in the neck, and I'll be finished. Oh, I assure you, I won't say a word. Sure. Sure. Uh. Suppose, well, no. suppose it does come off, I mean, this, this job in the full store, what about old uh. Sustra? Where would he go? What about him? Oh. Anyway. Some paradox, eh? Hey? I'll say that. But the the office in the full store, you you think they'll give the permission? Because after all, they're bound to know I'd be more comfortable there. I'd be warm. The hell they know. <laughs> Are you married? Yes. Any children? None. Now we've got three. Just for your information. Perhaps you might argue that I'd be more isolated Listen, there. Listen, Ferdinand. Because after all, they do want me to stay away from the other men, don't Listen, they? Listen, Ferdinand. But it might be an argument, mightn't it? Listen, Ferdinand. Yes. You ever met my missus? No. Listen, Ferdinand. Yes. Screw it all, the lot. 
I know what you mean. <laughs> the hell you know. You? <laughs> You're all right, mate. You just carry on writing your plays and humping your casks. The rest can stuff it. What more do you want? They're afraid of you, do you know that? Oh, come on. That's a fact! Well, what about me? Nobody gives a damn about me. They don't write reports upstairs about me. They can kick me around any way they want. They've got me cornered. They can crush me like a worm. Any time they like, like a worm. But you, you're all right. Listen, Ferdinand. Yes. About Boxer Oliver, you will bring her, won't you? Won't you? You, you won't just forget about it, will you? You promise me that. I assure you. I'll call her today. I'll see what I can arrange with her. I think she'll come. I'll do my best. Well, well you two are friends, right? Well, yes. Now, wait a minute. You said you two are friends, right? We are. Well, then where's the snag? You could be friends with anybody you like. Of course. Well, that's your inviolable right, damn it. Certainly. That's basic. Anyway, nobody needs to know how she got here. It'll just be a run of the mill get together with the workers, that's all. Nothing wrong in that. Is there? I don't think so. You'll bring her, Henry. I'll do my best. I'll call her. We're friends. There's nothing wrong with that. Listen, Ferdinand. Yes. If only you knew how pissed off I am with everything. I know. Go on, then. drink up. I am drinking. Had your morning break? Not yet. Stuff the break. Yes. Listen, Ferdinand. Yes. I want to have a word with you. I know. People are real bastards, you know, real bastards. Go on, drink up. I am drinking. How's your break? Not yet. Screw it all. I'm sorry. What? I must go now. Where do you want to go? Well, they'll be they'll be looking for me in the cellar. Oh, there. They've got Shakesy up. They just just stay where you are and drink. No, really, th they'll be angry with me. Sure. I understand. No. I'm boring you. I know what you mean. Booze ups with the singer got and actress Bokdala. That's a different cup of tea, eh? No, I, I enjoy being here with you. Really, I do. But there's no point in upsetting people, and particularly now when there's the chance of this job in the fool store. You mean you enjoy being here with me, really? Yes. You're not, uh, you're not just saying that just to please me. No. Listen, Ferdinand. Yes. You know what the worst of all this is? What? Come at my wit's end, what I'm supposed to keep on telling them, week in, week out. What do I know about you? Not very much. We don't really ever get together. The bits of gossip that happen to come my way are no bloody good. But you 
take extra breaks in the lavatory. Somebody saw you in town a couple of times with Marushka from bottling. Some blokes help fix your eating at your home from... So what? Do you know what I mean? Why do I keep on telling them? Will you tell me what? I can hardly be of any help to you there, I'm sorry. But you can. That is, if you want to. Me? Well, what do you mean? You do what you'd call an intellectual, right? You know the political setup, right? You know how to write, damn it. Well, then, who would know better than you the sort of things that they want to know? Sorry, but surely that seems... Child's play for you. This... This Tonda Mashe happens to be a decent sort of a bloke. And he happens to be in need of a bit of assistance. So we just can't let him down, eh? What do you say? <laughs> the whole thing now depends on you, Ferdinand. You help us out. And everything's gonna be all right. You help me, I help him, he helps me, I help you, and nobody's gonna be the loser. We don't wanna mess up our lives, eh? What are you looking at me like that for? I'm, I'm not looking. You'd have a direct influence on what they know about you. That's nothing to be sneezed at, is it? No. You'll be all right in that office in the full store. You'll keep warm in there. And, uh, you'll have plenty of time. Sounds marvelous. Well, where's the snag? I, I'm sorry. No. Look, really, I'm, I'm very grateful to you for all you've done for me. I do appreciate it. I know myself only too well how rare a stand of this sort is today. I honestly don't know what I'd have done without your help. I mean, the chance of that, that job in the full store would be an enormous relief to me, perhaps greater than you'd think. Only the thing is, what? please forgive me, but I... Well, I, I can't very well inform her myself. What do you mean, inform? Who said anything about informing? You see, I'm not concerned about myself. They can't do me any harm. But it's a matter of principle, isn't it? You see, as a matter of principle, I cannot... In... Well, I, I cannot participate in... In what? Well, come on, what is it you cannot actually participate in? In a practice with which I do not agree. So you can't. You cannot actually do it. Well, that's marvellous. Now we see you in your true colours. Now we know who you really are. What about me, eh? You just leave me holding the baby. You don't give a damn about me. It's all right with you if I'm a bastard, if I go on wading in the muck heap every day. But a gentleman, oh, 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 that's a different matter altogether. No, sir, the gentleman cannot participate. The gentleman cares about a principle. A principle is more important than a human being. You're all the same, a lot of you. Who? Who? You, gentlemen, intellectuals. Why not? You can afford it. Nothing's ever going to happen to you. Everybody's interested in you. You know all the angles. You know how to stick up for yourselves. You're up even when you're down. The ordinary bloke's just got to carry on. What's the good of all is drudgery. Shit, that's what. There's nobody who'll speak out for him. Everybody can 
wipe the floor with him. Everybody can order him around and he's got nothing in his life. And in the end, a gentleman comes along and says, he's got no principles. You wouldn't mind accepting a cushy job at the fuller store from me, eh? Just so long, sir. We didn't have to take with it also a bit of the muck I wait around in every day. Hey, eh? oh no, 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 that's too much for the gentleman. You're all very clever, the lot of you. You know the whole bloody setup. And you know how to damn well look after yourselves. Principles. Principles. If I happen too much as. If I have to so much as mention a principle, I get a kick in the pants. You got a chance, but what chance have I got? Nobody's ever going to look after me. Nobody's interested in me. Nobody gives a damn about me. Nobody's, gonna, nobody's afraid of me. Nobody writes about me. One of these days, you're going to go back to your actresses. You're going to show off to them how you... Handle cast in the brewery, and you'll be a hero. But what about me? What do you think I gotta go back to? Who cares about me? Who's gonna appreciate the things I've done? What's in life for me? What's in store for me? What future have I got? Hey? He's just an ordinary brewery mug, you know, but he's an honest bloke. <sighs> I'm gonna fight and get that job in the full store for you. I don't, I won't ask you for any reports. <sighs> just do this one thing for me. That's all I'm gonna ask you to do. You will do it, won't you? You will do it, aren't you? Hey, please. Just one evening. I'll be all right then. I'll be different after that. Things will be different after that. Then I'll know that I haven't lived for nothing. My bloody life wasn't such a bloody awful mess. You will bring her, won't you? Please. If you don't, I'll... I think I'll... Cheer up. Come in. Ah, Mr. Banyard, come on in. Sit down. Ah, that's better. <laughs> Have a lager. Sure. <clears throat> Thanks. Mm. 
What about the other half then? Oh. There you are, mate. Well, how's it going? Eh? Screw it all. The lot. <laughs>